Hello again, my fellow CNC enthusiasts. I'm Albert Price from Price CNC. Today I'm going to install the AVHC10 Arc Voltage Height Controller. This product is available from PriceCNC.com and on eBay, and it is designed to work with CNC plasma tables that run Mac 3 or UC CNC software. In this video, I will explain the function of all the wires you need to connect to your CNC machine and show you where and how to connect them. Before I reach for the toolbox, I'm going to explain the function of each of the wires that we are going to connect up. This is the manual that comes with the height controller. And if we flick through it, we can see a schematic drawing that shows how to connect it to the isolation module, your power supply, and your breakout board. And on the next page, there is a table that shows the function of each wire and the limits of operation of the circuits they are connected to. Further on then, there are some wiring examples of popular breakout boards. The main unit has a 12 core, 6 twisted pair cable. Twisted pairs are generally used to reduce cross interference of signals from one twisted pair to another. Each twisted pair has one coloured wire and one black wire. The only way to identify any of the six black wires is by the coloured wire it is twisted with. If you lose track of which black wire is associated with which coloured wire, you may need to strip back the outer sheath of the cable a few inches to see which wires are paired. The red and black pair are used to supply this unit and can be supplied with a voltage from 7 to 35 volts DC, and you guessed correctly, the red wire is positive and the black wire is negative. This wire can be connected to any 7 to 35 volt DC power supply that already exists in your CNC control box, provided it has 100 milliamps or 0.1 amps to spare when it is operating its normal loads. If your CNC machine has a 12 or 24 volt power supply for powering your servo or stepper motors, you can connect the red and black twisted pair to the power supply via this lead and connector assembly that comes with the height controller. This lead has an inline fuse fitted with a 200 milliamp fuse. If your machine has a 36 or 48 volt power supply, you can buy a low cost 9 or 12 volt DC power supply to power this height controller. Then there is the white and black pair. These connect to the white and black pair of the isolation module to the other connector that is provided. The yellow and black wires are for some advanced anti-dye features and are only necessary when using Mac 3. UC CNC software has a better way of implementing anti-dive and does not require this signal. I will explain more about this when I'm setting up the height controller in the software. The anti-dive signal is sent from the breakout board to the height controller via a spare output on your breakout board. If your breakout board has no spare output signals but does have a spare unused axis, the unused axis can function as two spare outputs. This signal must be from 2 to 50 volts DC. The yellow wire is positive and the black wire is negative. The remaining three pairs are the up, down and arc OK signals. Green is arc OK, brown is down and blue is up. These signals are not polarity sensitive. The signals are normally open when the signal is not active. The solid state relay in the height controller closes and returns the signal to the breakout board. What does this mean? Well, what a volt free or dry contact signal means is that, in each of the three pairs, the breakout board supplies the current on one of the wires, and when the signal is active, it returns back to the breakout board on the other wire in the pair. Just as if the height controller was operating a simple switch for each signal. Most breakout boards are designed to work with volt free or dry contact input signals, as this is the nature of the limit switches that these inputs are usually intended for. This is the isolation module. It connects your plasma cutter to the height controller so that the height controller can measure the arc voltage. Ideally, it should be located close to the plasma cutter. There are two 4mm sockets on this end and a small green socket on the side. These two plugs are for raw or direct arc voltage measurement, and the green socket is for 50 to 1 voltage divider measurement. 
you will only need to use the green socket or the other two, but not both. For a direct connection, well, most plasma cutters do not have a convenient connection point for measuring raw arc voltage, so generally, some modification to the product is required. One option is to open the connectors on the plugs that connect the plasma torch and clamp to the front of the machine, or by opening the machine and making direct connection to the back side of the main plasma terminals. Do not do either of these unless you are qualified to do so and are certain you know what you are doing. Plasma voltages can be lethal. For connection to the 50 to 1 input, you will need a plasma cutter that already has a built in 50 to 1 voltage divider. Most plasma cutters that are sold with a CNC torch, as opposed to a handheld torch, will come with a machine interface socket on the back of the unit. If you haven't already bought your plasma cutter, this is a good feature to look for. The main unit should be installed so that you can easily access it while operating the CNC computer. My machine is in a different room to my computer monitor. I'm going to attach the rubber feet to the bottom of it to stop it sliding around. Now I'm going to run the cable from my main unit down to the CNC control box. The isolation module should be mounted near the plasma cutter. I'm going to cable tie it to the leg on my CNC machine here. And then I'm going to cable tie this cable back along the leg and bring it back to my CNC control box. There it is now. Then I insert the cable from the isolation module into the main CNC enclosure and the cable from the main control unit. And take in the slack Tighten up the glands. And later I'll cut and strip those to length. Now that the cables are running into the control box, we need to see how much we need to remove from the cable's outer sheath to reach all the required terminals. The earth wires must connect back to the earth terminal inside the CNC enclosure. I also need to connect up the red and black pair in the main cable to my 24 volt power supply via the fused lead cable assembly. The white and black pairs in each cable connect together using the connector provided. The other four pairs of cables need to connect to the breakout board. And connect the two cable screen wires to earth. And then I connect the two black and white twisted pairs together with the connector, just like this. And then we can tuck that in out of the way. Then we connect the red and black wire from the main unit to the power supply via the fuse assembly. The four remaining twisted pairs connect to the breakout board. The green, blue and brown twisted pairs connect to the inputs on this breakout board. Then I connect the yellow and black pair to an output signal on the breakout board. This is for the anti-dive signal. As you can see here, the numbered terminals are the negative and the common is positive. So these are the three input signals wired in with the three black wires commoned into one terminal, which is how this breakout board works. The yellow anti-dive wire is into a permanent live and then there's a switched negative on the signal number pin for the return. And also in case you are wondering, 
This is the UC100 CNC motion controller and this is a little Latte Panda. This is the whole computer that runs my CNC machine. If you also want to know how to set up and use this product, please look at my other videos by clicking on these links. I'm Albert Price. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.